Today's video we start with a hydration chart. Am I hydrated? Aim for clear urine at least 10 times a day. Eat a diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. Drink a quart of water before meals. Thank you. So I just want to ask you Chris, uh, you've never been a cyclist your whole life have you? No. You so just started up? Just started up uh, April, April 2011 was my first proper bicycle. Before that it was like a Walmart bike that I was, you know, just riding around casually. Yeah, you yeah. Know, that's it. But you know, so no cycling background whatsoever in my life before that. Oh wow, because I've ridden with Lance Armstrong, I've trained with Alberto Conador, Oscar Pereira, Cadet Evans, Stuart O'Grady, I've been out racing and riding with a lot of these guys and I can spot a bit of cycling talent when I see it and I've been riding with Chris around these little hills around New York City and he's got a little bit of cycling talent. I can see it shining through there. But it's pretty unusual for someone who doesn't have a background in cycling or, or fit, like running, no? Because you were no. 300 pounds. Yeah. So you, you were... <laughs> I couldn't run around the block, Yeah. Man. I so had no you, fitness background whatsoever. So it's, it's quite interesting, this lifestyle is yielding some quick results in the fitness yeah. world. Yeah. But what tips would you be give to people who are new to cycling, who are just, you know... New to cycling? You know, just... What uh, you? What helped me? You know, taking it... The biggest thing is being consistent. I say this over and over and over again, but being consistent with it, and you know, not going absolutely crazy and going out and blowing yourself out or anything like that. But, you know. And, and just being, you know, not going out and crazy, blowing yourself out and trying to ride, you know, 50 miles a day when you're very first getting started, just smashing up the hills and you're know, getting too gung-ho about it. You're just getting consistent, being consistent yeah. with it and slowly but surely building it up. And the cycling, especially if someone has weight to lose and looking to get fit relatively quickly, yeah, I, I just it's been astonishing how, how awesome cycling yeah. is for that. It's about the impact, it's just you know, you're working your heart and lungs, you're building your muscles, but you know, you're not really thrashing your body at yeah. all and it's really safe and I highly recommend that for anyone who's looking to get fit. But you know, just doing it at a reasonable pace and consistent with it is the biggest thing. So you went so you went out and bought yourself a giant hybrid bike? Giant hybrid bike. It was a six hundred dollar bike nice. um, when I very first got started and that was you know perfect for me for what I was looking to to get started at. Entry now. level. And yeah, nice entry level. And then from there, once you kinda of earned your dues on, you know uh, just like if you go out and buy a car, it's like you don't you don't out and go go out and buy a Lambo the very first day when you're four, you know, fourteen, sixteen years old and get yeah. your permit. You know, you go out and you get you get the beater or whatever, you know, it's just an entry level kind of thing. Get the hangar. You know, just stand and know what to do and then from there, you know, go out and get a road bike or a nicer road bike or yeah. whatever. So yeah, just any bike is better than no bike. But you know, getting a getting a quality one you're gonna enjoy riding and you know, you're not get fitted up. You get fitted you get it properly fitted, yeah. Because you know, right. if your bike's too big, too small, you know, it's just not gonna be you're gonna be using your body properly yeah. in a way. It's kinda of forcing yourself but just getting fitted up with a proper bicycle and riding the damn thing. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And uh so another last little thing there's I'd say when you get fitted up at the bike shop, get a whiteout pen and mark your seat posts and handlebars in case anything slips, you get a reference point. So if your seat slips down, you can put it back up to where it was after you got fitted up. Very important there. And did you, were you scared of traffic initially or did you get over that or Yeah, definitely like I still talk to people they are just like, Oh man, I couldn't be like we're you know, riding our bikes all around New York City. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest cities on the planet. Yeah. yeah. And it's like you know, they're like, Oh man, I could never do that and it's kinda of self limiting like, oh man, that's just too scary, I can't do that. Yeah. But you know, just being conscious of it, I wear a hel helmet, I'm aware of what's going on, and, yeah. and I, I feel a lot more safe on a bicycle than I do in a train or a bus or an airplane yeah. or anything like that. Definitely. Effortless. Yeah. So easy. But it's so just actually doing it and realizing that you know, you're going to be okay if you're you know, conscious of it. Cool. So easy tips there. Invest in a, at least a $600 to $1,000 bike, get fitted up, get a good helmet. And get used to being in traffic, you get comfortable with it, and start small with it. I hope time. Keep on doing it. Be consistent. Yeah, you got it. So start riding your bike to the post office mm -hmm. or three miles down the shop and things like that. Or down to school, down to work, Bingo. a couple miles, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or to the subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Chris. Cheers. See you around.